Hello, my name is Eduardo Nevarez, and I'd like to present this research titled Disseminating Research News in HCI, Perceived Hazards, How-Tos, and Opportunities for Innovation. I worked in collaboration with Stel Smith from the group Lins Research at the University of Minnesota and Hayu Su from the HCI Institute at Carnegie Mellon University. Three main takeaways that I'd like for you all to recognize by the end of this talk is that studying issues related to science communication is important to HCI for reasons of disseminating the work of HCI to general audiences. The second one is that miscommunication can arise through social technically mediated interaction, which is the impetus of this research, and how we can be strategic in the approach to those interactions to foster better science communication. I'd like to briefly discuss what uh, science communication research is all about and then move on to um, how it relates to science uh, HCI research. Classically, um, science communication uh, has had a history of focusing on scientific literacy uh, and educating the public through educational programs and reporting of science. The flaw to this approach has been its inability to recognize that presenting more information about science to audience does not increase the understanding of it, and blaming this to um, a lack of understanding on low science literacy proves only to widen the gap between the public and science, which is commonly known as the deficit model. However, one shift um, to this model has asked researchers to reconsider the strategies that are being implemented to increase the understanding and instead focus on engagement. The rationale to this is that scientists and science in general are an institution that carries a lot of trust. Therefore, opening the doors um, to labs and engaging with publics of all ages can increase its understanding. Uh, one thing to know, however, is that Within those, uh, with a new approach, there's new technologies that impact the way that information is disseminated to the public, which I will be discussing in how the changing media environment has affected and is being impacted by the technological landscapes. Uh, one has been that media writes more stories at a faster rate so they don't go through the rigorous pre review or editing that is required or yes, that it used to go through. Secondly, is that there's a decline of trained science journalists because a lot of media organizations cannot fund a specialized journalist. And there's been also lots of cuts in media staff, which in itself can be negatively impacted in the kinds of stories that is disseminated to the public. And also there's, um, a lack of academic incentive for public engagement among researchers and scientists because um, tenure only allows, it's only um, achieved through publications and research. This shift to public engagement um, is noted by Bubala in 2009 and basically states that building relationship um, and trust with society and public audiences uh, is better than just trying to persuade them on what is the, the best science that they should just believe and to actively incorporate lay input into the decision-making or research, which in itself can cause everyone to be researchers. In human-computer interaction, um, there's a lot of interest in science communication. The most obvious one is the need for HCI scientists to share their research to public audiences. The growing technological advancements are shaping the future of society and sharing that information with the public is of essence as everyday activities like transportation, banking, and social networks mediate the interaction between people and technology. The other is the fact that science research falls in the scope of social technical system. Um, uh, the move to online news incorporates new hardware and software with unknown features on how audiences receive news, as well as the human and community aspects uh, embedded in the social technical interaction of receiving those news. Research in HCI are in an advantageous position to understand the social structures and roles of individuals interacting with that hardware as well as the software, which informs the design of systems that involve um, people and technology. Um, 
Some previous research or prior research uh, has focused on the production, uh, production related tools for single stakeholder groups. Like for example, journalists gathering info, uh, journalists generating headlines, and finding real people to comment. But this uh, lack of focus on SaaS communication can create very specific problems on how the dissemination of science information is conducted, which is why we use the media production pipeline in which we contrast it to the classical science communications approach and focus on science, science news as a product of social technically mediated interactions. And we recognize how we can uh, essentially change those outputs. So the media production pipeline involves um, research lab and um, research advocates, which are known as public information officers who write the press releases who are then sent to the news services um, that aggregate different press releases and then send them over to the newsrooms, which are composed of individual media organizations. And then from there, it goes into the general public. However, this traditional model of the media production pipeline has changed due to the new affordances of Web 2.0 that has shifted the embargo system to all being able to disseminate their work online and having uh, active uh, participation of what gets picked. But the MPP is error prone, thus there's no safeguards built in to protect the information integrity. There's uh, incorrect and damaging information can be disseminated broadly and not folk and one thing to note is that miscommunication is not misinformation as there's no ill intent, which is why I want to emphasize that although there is um, a lot of overlap between misinformation and disinformation, uh, miscommunication can arise as a function of social technical interactions. Uh, and this is a different angle where it's conventionally discussed in the current misinfodemic that we are experiencing where misinformation scours the web. Instead, the main focus of this paper is the interaction between scientists and media professionals and the risk of miscommunication that can be the result of that interaction. Um, which is why we define miscommunication as being the process of informing public audiences through inaccurate or misleading scientific information that is interpreted and presented by media organizations and journalists who write about science. Because miscommunication can be broadly construed as part of both disinformation and misinformation, this paper tries to disassociate miscommunication as the deliberate act of spreading misinformation either by propaganda or political agendas and instead focuses on the process of the media production pipeline of informing public audiences through inaccurate or misleading scientific information. Um, to do this, we examine the social technical interaction using the media production pipeline that involves community stakeholders with different goals and roles that use a variety of technologies to communicate science to public. Um, some examples for that are available online are the, uh, current technology that's being used to track um, um, the virus and people who have the virus and who they come in contact with, but also the opportunities of new HCI research to be disseminated to the public in which a lot of services, uh, health services have been moved online. Which is why our research questions uh, are, how does miscommunication of HCI research occur through a specific media production pipeline mechanism? And then what strategies can researchers use to foster, foster effective mass communication of their work using the MPP? Uh, to do that, to do this, we interview 12 participants, uh, nine were faculty, two were grad students, and one worked as an industry professional. We conducted semi-structured interviews in which the participants generally describe their experiences with media professionals, as well as provide specific examples. And we asked them about the challenges, tools, and strategies that they like to know about the interactions and future interactions with media professional. Uh, to analyze the data, we use a grounded theory approach in which we transcribe the data, we open coded the transcript, we um, engage in immersive groupings where we analyze and then cluster um, using affinity maps. And then we developed a codebook of themes in which we recorded that to develop shorter themes. Essentially, our findings were 12 miscommunication types, 
and four origins. And then we developed 13 strategies in the paper. Um, but I will only focus on the interview since that is the main source of which a lot of miscommunication can arise. And that's where a lot of researchers have a lot more control in how to mediate that interaction. However, I will note the different um, miscommunication types um, right now, for example. The first origin is press releases in which we identify three misinformation types. One is being the fabrication of information. Uh, the second one is cherry picking of information from studies that or ideas from studies and the motivation of studies by the researcher that are portrayed as results. Uh, the second is interviews, which I will discuss in detail, uh, which in itself has two misinformation types. One is the pre-constructed narrative, uh, and the other one is the omission of scientific detail. The third is something that a lot of researchers have no control over, and that is the media incentives. Um, a lot of media have political agendas, and, and propaganda can be disseminated uh, through their uh, organization, their enact sensationalization of ideas or scientific uh, research. They um, also can uh, disseminate inaccurate claims, as well as write um, their articles in tones that are very negatively impacted, um, impacting the research. And they sometimes does do uh, misattribute the research to other people. And then the fourth origin is web 2.0 affordances in which um, unintended identity disclosure can arise, as well as we rapid republishing of incorrect uh, information uh, through the affordances of web 2.0. So interviews. The interviews, we found that there are two misinformation. One is the pre-constructed narrative where uh, journalists or media professionals interview um, researchers in which they themselves have a pre-constructed narrative and they um, try to get the quotes that already confirm their bias. <clears throat> the second one is the omission of scientific detail in which um, a lot of researchers uh, don't expect that the scientific process of the research uh, will be described in the, in the article but that itself could misconstrue the, the framing of the research um, that the uh, researcher or scientist conducted if the journalist does not understand the scientific process. Uh, and some of the strategies that we uh, developed from interview is make sure that you identify the incentive and align it with the media professional or journalist um, deliver a prepared bottom line to the journalists when you interview with them. Uh, you practice verbalizing responses ahead of time to be able to disseminate that information clearly and foster an attitude of collaboration with the journalists. Um, so as you can see, there are many more misinformation that we identified and many more strategies that can be used to um, work through those mis uh, miscommunication. Um, however, uh, one of the things that I'd like to talk back before the end of this talk is that, you know, there is a lot of interest in HCI uh, and science communication, and the miscommunication can arise through the social technical systems, as well as the strategic and the best approaches to communicate science uh, in order for us to be able to disseminate our work um, clearly to public audiences. Future research, um, we hope that we can further explore the interaction between uh, all the different stakeholders and the techno technological landscapes that are, are currently uh, affecting the, the way that mis uh, misinformation travels through online settings. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, there's my email and my contact information you'd like to reach out. Thank you so much for your time.